February 5, 2020 Memorial of St. Agatha, Virgin and Martyr A reading from the second book of Samuel. King David said to Joab and the leaders of the army who were with him, Tour all the tribes in Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and register the people, that I may know their number. Joab then reported to the king the number of people registered. In Israel, 800,000 men fit for military service. In Judah, 500,000. Afterward, however, David regretted having numbered the people and said to the Lord, I have sinned grievously in what I have done. But now, Lord, forgive the guilt of your servant, for I have been very foolish. When David rose in the morning, the Lord had spoken to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says. I offer you three alternatives. Choose one of them, and I will inflict it on you. Gad then went to David to inform him. He asked, Do you want a three years' famine to come upon your land, or to flee from your enemy three months while he pursues you, or to have a three days' pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what I must reply to him who sent me. David answered Gad, I am in very serious difficulty. Let us fall by the hand of God, for he is most merciful. But let me not fall by the hand of man. Thus David chose the pestilence. Now it was the time of the wheat harvest when the plague broke out among the people. The Lord then sent a pestilence over Israel from morning until the time appointed, and 70,000 of the people, from Dan to Beersheba, died. But when the angel stretched forth his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord regretted the calamity and said to the angel causing the destruction among the people, Enough now, stay your hand. The angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. When David saw the angel who was striking the people, he said to the Lord, It is I who have sinned. It is I, the shepherd, who have done wrong. But these are sheep. What have they done? Punish me and my kindred. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in time of distress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. You are my shelter. From distress you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom you will ring me round. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? and they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. This is Catholic Daily Reflections for Wednesday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time. Today's reflection is entitled, The Calling of a Hidden Life. 
Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? The people who knew Jesus from his youth were suddenly astonished at his wisdom and mighty deeds. They were amazed at all he said and did. They were familiar with him as he grew up, knew his parents and other relatives, and as a result had a hard time understanding how this neighbor of theirs was suddenly so impressive in his words and deeds. One thing this reveals is that while Jesus grew up, he apparently lived a very hidden life. It's clear that the people of his own town were unaware of the fact that he was someone special. This is clear because once Jesus began his public ministry of preaching and performing mighty deeds, the people of his own town were confused and even astonished. They never expected all of this from Jesus of Nazareth. Therefore, it's clear that during his first 30 years, he lived a normal and ordinary daily life. What can we take from this insight? First, it reveals that at times, God's will for us is to live a very normal and ordinary life. It's easy to think that we should be doing great things for God. Yes, that's true. But the great things he calls us to are at times simply living normal daily life well. There is no doubt that during Jesus' hidden life, he lived a life of perfect virtue. But many in his own town did not recognize this virtue. It was not yet the will of the Father that his virtue be made manifest for all to see. Secondly, we see that there was indeed a time when his mission changed. The will of the Father at one moment in his life was that he suddenly be cast into the public eye. And when this happened, people noticed. These same realities are true for us. Most are called to live day in and day out in a somewhat hidden way. Know that these are the moments when you are called to grow in virtue, do small hidden things well, and enjoy the quiet rhythm of ordinary living. But we should also be aware of the possibility that God may, from time to time, call us to step out of our comfort zone and act in a more public way. The key is to be ready and attentive to His will and plan for you. Be ready and willing to let Him use you in a new way if it be His divine will. Reflect today upon the will of God for your life right now. What is it He wants of you? Is He calling you out of your comfort zone to live a more public life? Or is he calling you, at this time, to live a more hidden life while you grow in virtue? Be grateful for whatever his will is for you and embrace it with your whole heart. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for your perfect plan for my life. I thank you for the many ways that you call me to serve you. Help me to always be open to your will and to daily say yes to you, no matter what you ask. Jesus, I trust in you.
to me.